This is part 2 of the Infinite Zooming app we coded last time. Today I'll show you how I used Photoshop's AI to generate images. Then I'll also show how to update the app to load them instead of the procedurally generated ones from last time. Before we get into coding, let me briefly tell about the images I made. I wanted to start with an interesting shot, so I took a screenshot from this video of me swimming underwater. Then I resized it to one-third its size, moved it in the center, and asked the AI to generate the missing part. I decided to scroll through the results and choose the one I liked the most. In this case, the one where the hands looked okay-ish. And I went on like this, until I got 50 images. I could have went all the way to 100, but thought 50 is more than enough and I had better things to do. If you have Photoshop, you can do something similar yourself, or you can use my images from the link in the description if you want to follow along. Now, let's set the scene for some coding. Get it? Because the app will switch from... No, no, no. Gonna code, debug and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. I have the code from last time, so the one that is generating these thumbnails here and then is doing the zoom animation, the zooming out from the first one to the second one and to the third one and to the fourth one and so on, all the way to the end. And um, I want to now add the real images I generated in, well, with my camera and with Photoshop and see how those look here. And the first thing I tried was to make it so that I can drag and drop the images on top of the of each individual thumbnail here. So let me show you how I did that. This is the code from last time and in image my image js I'm going to add here some event listeners so that the mouse can interact with them. So add event listeners is going to be a function that we implement here, a method for this class, and we only call it inside, so I make it private. And going here, at the bottom of the other private methods, add event listeners is going to add to the canvas a drag over event listener. And I'm just going to say here, prevent the default functionality. The same thing goes for the drop. And what this does is if I go back and refresh the page, and now I'm going to take an image from my computer and drag it over the page here. You probably won't see this because I'm not recording this part, but I'm going to drop it over this image. So now I'm dropping it and nothing happened. And uh, it shouldn't do anything. But if you would have dropped it here, let me take it again and drop it anywhere else on the page, like here, it actually loads the image in some new um, tab there. So this is the behavior I wanted to prevent. And that's what we did with this code at the moment. Now on drop, we actually want to replace the image inside of this my image object to be whatever I dropped there. So this part is still missing. And we can expand here, open up these curly braces. And after we prevent the default functionality, we can take the file. I'm just going to take Consider that I dropped one file, or if I take multiple, I take the first file. And then I make sure that it's of type image. So if it starts with image, then it should be fine. And I'm going to load and draw the image from this file. Now, this is going to be a new function that I'm going to implement here as a public method this time. You'll see why in, in a second. Given the file, I'm going to initialize a file reader and read as data URL. 
unload, so when this reader finishes loading, I'm going to generate the image. So image is going to be a new image and I'm going to set its source to e.target result. So this gives us the image information as the source of this image object. And when this image loads, then I'm going to draw it in this callback function. I'm going to draw this image at zero, zero on the full canvas width and height. So this now should have that intended functionality. Now save, refresh, and I'm going to try dragging some images here. So let's say the first one. Okay. Let's try, I'm going to do this first row just to test the animation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Really smooth. Nice. Oh, and, and then it ended. So I could do this for all of them, but I'm not going to drag 50 images here. I realized that this approach is not going to get me very far. Or, I mean, it's still much faster than animating it in some video editing program. But we can do better. I'm going to add the button here that loads all of them. So we can select multiple ones. And to do that, I'm going to go in index HTML. And next to this zoom button, I'm going to add a new input of type file. I give it an ID of file input. And I say here multiple because this will allow me to select many files. And then here we have to add an event listener for change. to the file input. And I'm just going to generate an array of files from event target files. And if these are more than one, then I'm going to load images with these files as a parameter. So what we need to do now is load images, implement it, set my images is equal to, and I'm going to remap each file to a new my image object where we load and draw the image, the function that we implemented previously here as a public method. So that's why it was public. And now return the image. When this is done, I'm going to have one last function call here, render image list. So let's implement this render image list. What it does is it's going to remove all the thumbnails that are already there. So let's first get them by doing a query selector for that class image thumb. And for each of them, I'm going to remove all of them. And now I'm going to generate new ones depending on what is this my images. And we already have code for that up here. We can take it, paste it there. And actually we need to call render image list up here as well. This one is going to remove some thumbnails in the beginning when loading the page, but there are no thumbnails there, so it's not going to do anything really. And uh, before we test, we also need to make sure that my images is not a constant because now it changes here in load images. So let's see, save and refresh. And this is what we get. We can now choose the files and I'm going to select everything. Control A and open. And now I wait a little bit. We don't have a preloader for this could have, but I'm not going to bother with this anymore. And all of them are here, all 50 of them. And let's see.